Well, first I'm going to start with the story. Um, I'm going to read it. My name is Matt. The most terrifying question you can ask me is, where are you from? You see, I'm 39 years old, and I don't have a clue how to answer that question. I am a third culture's kid. As a young boy, my parents moved to Haiti as missionaries. Suddenly, everything changed. I couldn't understand anybody. The food was different. We were the only gringos, or white people, and I was the only boy who had a soccer ball. After many tears and much loneliness, months of loneliness, I began to feel kind of at home. I soon spoke Creole well, and I learned to like rice and beans. The neighbor boys all gathered at my house every afternoon to play soccer ball, play soccer. And I was quickly becoming Haitian. And then we went home. But where was home? We moved to a place that had learned to live without us. They had kind of forgotten us. A place where they didn't kick the ball. They hit that ball with a stick. Can you imagine? It's called baseball. None of my friends from my home had ever left the con their country. They had never navigated airports. They did not know the value of passport. They didn't know Creole. And they were terrible at soccer. No one had a clue how to make rice that was edible. In fact, they would boil their rice and then put brown sugar on it. Gross. None of my friends at home knew where, what, what it was like to live in the middle of political unrest, where there was shootings in the street. In short, I did not fit in, and I never would. As I grew older, I found the values and activities of my friends to be boring and meaningless. I soon lived for the next trip, or the next new thing. I tried to stay as busy as possible to keep the feelings of loneliness at bay and try to find some meaning in life. And because I was not afraid to do new things, I became the de facto leader everywhere I went. I found that I could often blend into any group I found, but at the same time, I never could quite fit in. In short, I felt homeless, even when I was at home. This story is about Matt. My middle name is Matt. This is my story. When I was seven, we moved to Haiti, we lived there a couple years, and I never fit in again. And most of you who moved away from your hometown, your home areas, move to the city, no matter what happens from here on out, you're going to struggle with fitting in because your life is different from everybody else's. It's called a third culture's kid. Third culture's kids, it's a, it's a term that's used in, in, in education, in psychology, in lots of other places, but it, it's not a necessarily a disease or anything like that. It simply tells you what somebody's background is. Let's just say you have one person who their parents grew up in an area that was like this chair. You know this chair, it's kind of cold. It's strong. You can jump around on it. You can sit on it, but it's not very comfortable. And then they move, this family moves over here to this culture over here. And this culture here, this chair is actually more comfortable. It looks a little flimsy. It is a little flimsy. Uh, if you stand up on it, you might tilt the thing front and fall off, but it's more comfortable. And combine those two chairs together, you get a different chair. One that's really comfortable sometimes, but one that's kind of bulky, awkward. And that's a little bit like third culture's children are. And I say children because you're not really children anymore, but you, you are third culture's in your childhood. And so third culture's kids mean that's what happened in your childhood. I'm still a third culture's kid, I'm 39 years old. In my childhood, I went from one culture where my parents were at, I moved to another culture that was very different, and there's two of those merged together forms another culture in me. And interesting enough, when you do that, you find that there's no one else quite like you because nobody else quite has that combination. And it can be very difficult to navigate life. And I'm, I'm saying this because I think probably most of you, whether you knew it or not, you probably wrestle with some of this. Um, especially if you moved in between the time you were ages about 8 to 14. Those are, are some primary years, which probably quite a few of you have. Now, there's some blessings and there's some things that are hard about being a third culture's kid. Uh, one of the things is you tend to carry a fair amount of grief. I say you, maybe this isn't you, but third culture's kids tend to carry a fair amount of grief. They lost things back here. They moved things over here. They gained some things, but they also lost things. And 
They don't know where they fit. They don't, they've lost things. They've gained things. They don't know what's valuable. They, they struggle with a lot of this. I want to give you some, some um, oops, wrong page. I'm going to give you some, I'm going to say, struggles of being a third culturist kid. Um, yeah, you struggle to fit in. But at the same time, you feel comfortable almost everywhere. But you don't have that kind of place of, ah, I can let down my guard. Um, you may struggle to develop close relationships. You may make friends easily. But that really close friend who knows what you're thinking and knows what you're going to do next, you kind of struggle to open yourself up to a friend like that. Especially if it's outside of your family because you might leave again. And it's just something that's programmed and you might leave again and lose that friend. Um, you may struggle to find clear direction in life. Exactly, like, where do you want to do? Where are you going to be? And just kind of struggle with that. One thing you probably will have, and this can be a positive or a negative, you have what we call wanderlust, where you always want to try something new. You always want to go a new place. You're always looking for something new to do. That can be a good thing. It can be a not so good thing. Sometimes third culture's kids will present as somebody who's very depressed. Other times, they will present as somebody who has their life all together. I presented as somebody who had their life all together. Nobody knew what was going on inside of me. Nobody knew that I was struggling because I was the popular kid. I was a kid who would, you want to go someplace? Hey, I'll drive. Let's go. You want to go to New York for the weekend? Let's go. And my friends were saying, New York? I don't even know how to get there. And when I get there, I don't know what to do there. We'll figure it out. I know how to read a map. Their, their parents, your parents' culture does not really work very well for you because they go hoe beans or corn. And I don't have any corn in my yard to hoe. At the same time, the culture around me doesn't really work either because my neighbor boys all wear their pants at their knees and they go do things that I'm not comfortable doing. So you never have that quite place where you fit in. Um, there's some struggles with being a third culture's kid. There's also some things that are very rewarding about being a third culture's kid. I'm going to call them the strengths of being a third culture's kid. Um, you might feel like you don't have a home, you don't have that place of rest, but at the same time you feel at home everywhere, or almost everywhere. You can be, a, you can go to your neighbors, let's say it's a African-American Cut family, they invite you over, you go over there for a barbecue, and you enjoy your evening. At the same time, you can go to one of your aunts and uncles who live in the country and go ride four wheelers, and you can enjoy the evening. Neither of those feel like they're really odd or really hard to do. You fit in everywhere, like a chameleon, or like where I'm at now, like an iguana. We have iguanas all over, some of them get five feet long, and they change colors. So one day they're green, the next day they're orange, the next day they're brown. You can kind of change colors and, and fit into almost every situation. Almost, but not quite. Um, when it comes to culture, you tend to take a jack of all trades. You know a little bit about this culture, a little bit about that, about that culture, a little bit about that culture. And you might even pick up a few words of multiple languages, especially if you're in a more of an international place. But you don't quite know if you, when you're talk, if you're communicating and your thoughts are getting across. One of the things that's good about being a third culture's kid is it's much easier to understand what it means to be a pilgrim and stranger. If you ask me where I'm from, I don't know. That's a scary question. There was, there was a time that any question you asked me, that was the question to get my hair rise more than anything else. Where are you from? I didn't know. And that's a normal question that people should know. And I didn't know. And that might be a question that's hard for you, but the idea of being pilgrims and strangers on this earth and we're looking forward to heaven is something that we can, we can reconcile a lot easier than somebody who does not have that third culture perspective. And that's one thing that's very valuable about being a third culture's kid. A kingdom center viewpoint is not hard to, com to comprehend. It's, it's there. Uh, you also have a multi-dimension view of the world. What's that in English? Um, if you only know how, if you've only ever seen things from one perspective, 
you only have a partial understanding. But if you see this thing, this thing from that perspective, but then I flop it like this, and you see the bottom, and you see the top, you now see a lot more about this than what you had before. If you are not a single culture person, you see a stand. You don't see anything else more than that. You don't see that, it's actually hollow down there. You know a solid before? Now you do. Um, somebody who's third culture sees things from multiple different angles, and they can often understand things in a way that most people do not understand them. That's a good thing about being a third culture's kid. Uh, you tend to be adaptable and flexible. You're doing one thing, and all of a sudden something changes, and somebody comes over, fine, we'll do this instead. Much more adaptable than somebody who is single cultured. Uh, another thing, and don't, don't get proud about this, but third culture kids tend to mature much younger. Don't be proud about that. But probably you're going to find your friends are older than you are. Because you're going to be thinking on life at a level that somebody is older than you. When I was 16, my friends were 18. And when I was 18, my friends were 20. I was <coughs> always hung out with people that were two years older than me. Because that's the level I was thinking on. And you may find that to be the same. You might find that people that are are ordering you are the ones that you tend to relate to the best. Don't get proud saying, oh, I'm a third culture kid, so I'm more mature than you. But you probably are a little more mature than your age group. Oops, I fell off. So that's something, one of the benefits of being a third culture's kid. Now, you might be a third culture's kid. You're, like the jokes, you might be a hillbilly, or you might be this. If you might be a third culture's kid, you find it easy to connect with people that are different than you. Do you know how odd, it, how strange most children, those children are people, youth. I don't care who you are. How hard it is for some people to think of going to somebody's house who is different, maybe a different country. That that can be very difficult for some people to think of going to somebody's house that's from China or Russia, or Africa, or wherever else, probably most of you don't find, would not find that very difficult. Your neighbors probably are from some of those places. And it's not hard. But some people would find that very difficult. Um, something I was been interested in watching my children, who are also third culture's kids, when we get to a group with a, a lot of different people, they almost always, they come away and talk about their friends and what they made. And when I figure out who their friends are, their friends are almost always children of other missionaries or church planters. Even if we're a group of 1,000 people, they will find that one child who's a missionary to Nepal or wherever else. You tend to find that other third culture's kids and your, other third culture kids and yourself tend to link much quicker. So if you find that you, are, you connect well with other third culture's kids, you might be one. Um, you might find yourself most comfortable in situations where everyone else is a little bit of a misfit. You might find it hard to break into the, the club or the, the clique. But when everybody is kind of not really fitting in, that's where you probably feel the most at home. I said about that, that place that you feel like, oh, I'm home. For me, the place that is closest to home is the public lounge at Sherry Men Bible Institute, SMBI which is an odd place to pick for home. Because you're not even allowed to kick off your shoes there. You're not, supposed to, you're not even supposed to sit like this with your feet up on the chair. Um, there's all kinds of rules you have in there. It's not what, rules that you don't have in your living room at home. But that's close to the home. And as I thought about that over the years, I think the reason is, is because everybody else that walks through those doors is a little bit of a misfit too. Because this is their home. And so that very soon becomes my home. Because I feel as comfortable here as I'm probably more comfortable here than anybody else does. And so it becomes my home. Um, you might be a third culture kid. If you have to leave the culture that you live in now to visit your extended family, if you have to leave the city or the, the um, town that you live in to go out into the country or go to another state to see your extended family, you're probably a third culture kid. And you probably are going to find that you are able to, um, you, you're most comfortable with people who embrace a faith or an ad ideal, such as anabaptism. You feel much more kinship to them than somebody who just lives it out and doesn't really embrace it. 
If it runs deep, that's probably a sign your third culture is kit. Um, in childhood development, something that none of you have children, well, some of you have children yet. I have children. You have children, but nobody else has children here, I don't think. Childhood development, there are three needs that every child looks for. The one is to be, to have a place to belong. The second one is to be recognized. I am a child of this family. And the third is a connection, that you know who your, your relatives are, you know where you, you have the place where you belong, it's my house, this is who I am, and this is my connections. For a third culture's child, a lot of times everything there is shattered. You don't know where you belong, you don't know what house you belong in, Sometimes you don't even know if you have a house. Um, <laughs> this is my daughter, by the way. Um, you, don't know, uh, you don't know where you belong. You don't know, are you recognized? Or are you just kind of along for the ride? And the idea of connection is you don't know where your connections are. You don't know who's going to be around next week. You don't know who's leaving. You don't know if you're leaving. Those are hard things to deal with. But those are all things that help to develop you into a third culture's child. Now, there's benefits, I said benefits, and, and downsides to being third culture's children. Um, what do we do with it? So I think most of you are probably third culture's children. They know of you, most of you are. What do you do with it? Um, in third culture's children, let's just say missionary children, because missionary children are third culture's children. Missionary children, about 20% of them excel in life and really go far. About 20% of them fall apart and they end up in very bad places, on the streets, in drugs, very bad places. And about 60% bounce around trying to figure out what where home is. Okay. So how do you not be the 20% who bounce around and or do, perform very poorly and fall into drugs and live on the street? How do you not be that? How do you not even be that 60% in the middle that's bouncing around trying to find out where home is? How do you be those 20% that really excel? There's a couple of things that you can um, do to, to deal well with being a third culture's kid. Number one, it's okay to grieve. You have left family. You have maybe left your big yard or the woods that you go play in or your friends. You've left that, and it's okay to grieve, and it's required that you grieve. And, you, and you're saying, hey, yeah, those were losses and make me kind of sad. That's good. Um, if you admit that those are losses and uh, work through that, you have a better chance of becoming one of the third culture's kids who excel. Um, it's okay to cry. And it's okay to cry in public. I did not cry in public from the time I turned probably nine Two hours in my 20s. Probably nobody saw me cry. I cried by myself. I didn't cry on anybody else's shoulder. That was not healthy. It's okay to cry. It's okay, and especially for you guys, it's okay to cry. It's okay to tell your dad, I need to go for a walk, and just tell him how you're feeling. It's okay. If you want to do well in life, you're going to have to, because you won't be able to carry the burden by yourself. Um, it's okay to write songs. Write journals, write poems or stories. You know what? The story that I wrote about Matt, I cried a lot writing that story. It's okay to cry. Um, write stuff down. Put, stuff in, put your thoughts on paper. It's a good thing to do. It doesn't, you don't have to edit. You don't have to, you can burn it when you're done with it. It's fine. It's probably it's best if you do burn it. <laughs> Somebody else finds it. But put it down on paper. When you start writing things down, you start freeing your mind. So do that. And then start to embrace the fact that your life's experiences are unique to you. You're not your parents' culture. You're not the culture of those around you. You're a different culture. And outside of your, maybe your siblings, there is nobody else that has a culture quite like yours. Because it's been a combination of things that you probably aren't gonna find anybody else to do. Maybe a few other friends, if you do, and if you move with a couple other families, they might have a culture that's very similar to you. But most people are not gonna have a culture like yours. And that's okay. But embrace the fact that you are, you think through things differently. Now, you might not think through, through things barely. You may, you may not, but you think through things differently. Um, your perspective is valuable. 
and be quick to share, especially with parents or a close confidant, quick to share your perspective. And it's okay to live outside the box. You know, I, I was all, I've been in all your shoes before, at least somewhat, and you all want to fit in. But it's okay just to not fit in. That's fine. The world is full of young people who are trying to fit in, and most of them don't. If you look at a school bus, you drive a school bus, how many of them look like they fit in? <laughs> They're trying to, but they do some hideous things to try to look like they fit in. <laughs> huh? I agree. Yeah, people do hideous things to try to fit in. Um, they put holes in all parts of their bodies trying to fit in, and you're, okay, they put tattoos on all kinds, they don't even look good. Some, some of those tattoos can look okay, but they do all kinds of weird stuff to try to fit in, and they just don't fit in. It's okay not to fit in. You're not going to anyway. Okay? So don't try too hard to fit in. And last of all, allow God to redeem your experiences. If you're angry, tell God about it. If you're sad, tell God about it. In your perspectives, allow him, grieve with him. You know, Jesus was a third culture as kid too. You ever think about that? So was Daniel. So was Ruth, probably. We don't know how old she was when she went back, but by culture, she might have been 14, might have been 15. There is, I put a list together, but I don't know where this at now. Somewhere. There, the Bible is full of third culture's kids. In fact, as I look down through people, uh, I think probably almost half the main characters in the Bible are third culture's kids. You ever think about that? And, and God could have done what he did with Abraham or Jacob or Isaac, even David. He could have done that with somebody that wasn't a third culture's kid, but he programmed them. I, mean, I think he put them in that situation so they'd have the perspective so that he could t lead them in a way, in a big, powerful way. And third culture's kids have a ceiling that's much higher than most other children. But they also have a lower floor. If you let God redeem your hurts, the disappointments in life, he can take you in a long ways. I think that's all I have. Anybody have any thoughts or any questions? It's not fun being a third culture's kid. Never said it would be. It is giving you tools that you wouldn't be able to get any other way. And with those tools, you can do a lot of powerful things, but it's not fun. You can wrestle through things that most children, most youth your age, most parents, most adults have never wrestled through. And that's okay. It's kind of hard to wrestle through it when you're 15, 16, 17, or 11, 12, 13. Wrestle through things your parents maybe have not even wrestled through yet or, or are currently wrestling through. It's, it's difficult, but it is setting you up to be able to have a handle on life that you wouldn't have otherwise. Any other thoughts, questions? My children are wrestling through the thing of being third culture's kids right now. We just moved again. And it's not easy, but I am excited to see what may come out of it and what they will become down the road. Well, we could labor on here for a while. I could put you all in groups and have you talk, but I'm not going to because I know this subject like this can be a little awkward. But if you feel like you are struggling, reach out to somebody. Reach out to your parents. Reach out to somebody at church. Somebody. Because if you just hold it all inside, you will become that 20% who does not do well. If you wrestle well, give it to God, you have the potential to be the next Samuel. Samuel is probably the perfect illustration of a third culture's kid. He's probably three or four years old. I mean, he's ripped out of his home, maybe five, probably not much older than that. Ripped out of his parents' home, moved into the temple and put the work. I don't think he was a slave, but talk about a cultural shift. Samuel was one of those. 
God used Samuel in a very powerful way.